How's it going YouTube? I'm Landon and welcome back to a new most amazing top 10 video. Things are about to get a little bit crazy. As of April 1st, there were actually 2,842 death row inmates in the United States and this is no joke. Well, a lot of these people have committed horrible crimes, but some of these people who were strapped in the electric chair and given a lethal injections were actually innocent. I mean, is this real life right now? It doesn't make sense to why a ton of people were killed and later they were found innocent, why were they not given a fair trial with DNA tests and really look through all of the evidence? Well, this is the top 10 people wrongfully executed and in the comment section below, tell me if you believe in the death penalty. Just before we get to this video, we are now on Patreon. We're going to upload a whole bunch of extra bonus content for you guys on there. We're going to be giving away free merch, allowing you guys to pick the videos for us. You get to become a part of the most amazing team. So if you guys want to help support us, click the link down below and I cannot wait to see all of you most amazing people over on Patreon. Starting us off on this list, at number 10, we have Claude Jones, who's actually the last man to be put to death during George W. Bush's time as the governor of Texas. Claude was executed after a liquor store robbery went horribly wrong. During this robbery, Alan Hilsendagger lost his life when he was shot three times, and Claude became the prime suspect, and he was quickly given the lethal injection. The crime took place in 1989 and in 2000 when Claude was 60 years old, he was killed. One of the key evidence was a strand of hair. Well, when it came to properly DNA testing it, it was no doubt it actually it didn't belong to Claude at all. The hair wasn't even retested until the Innocence Project stepped in 10 years after he was killed. So for 11 years, they had an innocent man sitting in a jail cell on death row and he was killed for someone else's crime. Number 9, we have Cameron Todd Willingham, who was convicted and executed for the murder of his three young children by arson at his family home in Corsicana, Texas, and this was back in 1991. Cameron was executed at the age of 36 years old. This case didn't sit well for some, so people actually started to dig into the case, and they found out that the investigation techniques used in this case were actually a bit odd, and also the evidence was misinterpreted. A Texas Forensic Science Commission examined the evidence themselves, and they found claims of arson were very doubtful. Also, the people who testified, like a witness named Johnny Webb, his testimonies were very questionable. Well, it was found out that the fire just started at the home, and Cameron was just really lucky to be alive. He didn't start the fire. So in this situation, we have this poor guy who just lost his whole family due to a fire, and instead of the state helping him out, you know, financially, emotionally, they deemed him as the prime suspect. I mean, is this real life right now? Kind of sickening when you think about it. Ruben Cantu comes into this list at number eight. Now, this is a a really crazy one. Well, they're all crazy on this list, but Ruben was executed for a murder people believed he committed when he was just 17 years old. So this is a minor who was put on death row. I didn't know you can put a minor on death row, but I'm assuming he was just convicted as an adult. Do you guys believe that kids under the age of 18 years old should be tried as an adult? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm really interested to hear you guys. Ruben was killed at the age of 26 years old by lethal injection. Before he died, he wrote a note that read, I have been framed in a capital murder case. I was framed because I shot an off-duty police officer named Joe DeLud Luz. Ruben became the fifth juvenile offender to be executed by the state of Texas. Ruben and his friends were accused of shooting dead two people during a robbery that went bad. Well, it was thought that the two people died. Well, one of the people shot, they actually survived and it was a police officer. That officer, when he was able to talk, said that Ruben was the killer. Well, after Ruben was executed, the police officer actually took back his story. So why I looked into this a little bit more and I was looking to see if this officer was executed as well because he just executed someone for killing someone and this person just lied about the whole thing but I wasn't able to find anything. Number seven we have Carlos De Luna. He is an American man who was convicted of murder. He was executed at the age of 27 years old by the state of Texas. 24 year old Wanda Lopez was killed back in 1983. She was a gas station attendant who died from multiple stab wounds apparently from a buck knife. Wanda was killed while on the phone with police. This case was actually reopened years later and upon findings, it was known that Carlos De Luna was the wrong person and the murder was actually a man who looked very similar to Carlos's description. So it was his lookalike that should have been killed for the crime instead of this innocent man who lost his life. Really flawed justice system if you guys ask me. Moving into number six, we have Jesse Tafaro who was convicted of murder and was executed by the electric chair in the state of Florida for the murders of of 
12 of Florida Highway Patrol officers. These officers were killed during a traffic stop. The case is more simpler than the other ones on this list. So when Jesse was killed, the actual murderer confessed to the crime and it was proven that Jesse Tafaro was the wrong guy. So the real guy just waited till the, the other guy who was, you know, sentenced away for his crime, waited till he died and then he came out and said, hey, you actually killed the wrong person, ha ha, it was me. This is just, uh, again, the justice system flawed. I'm not sure why they keep screwing up. This is around the time when people really questioned the justice system. This became headline news. There was a movie made based out of this. You know, it's just insane. They're turning these events into, into movies. At number five, we have Timothy Evans, who was a Welshman. He was falsely accused of murdering his wife and infant daughter at the residence in Notting Hill, London. Timothy was convicted back in 1950. During his trial, Timothy kept his innocence and he actually accused a neighbor, John Christie, of committing the murder. But for some reason, John wasn't a suspect at all. Well, three years after Timothy's execution, John Christie, who only Timothy suspected as the murderer, was actually the serial killer. John actually killed six other women in the same house, including his own wife. This is just so messed up. Number four, Larry Griffin. Larry was sentenced to death for the murder of 19-year-old Quentin Moss in St. Louis, Missouri. Larry was convicted of killing a teenager during a drive-by shooting. According to the courts, Larry was their guy, and he was executed by lethal injection back in 1995. This absolutely made no sense because Larry's fingerprints was not on the car or on the murder weapon. All of the evidence against him were circumstantial. Right up to his execution, Larry maintained his innocence. Ten years later, in 2005, a university professor from Michigan Law School reopened the case. And upon his investigation, he concluded that Larry was innocent. The killer is still out there today, and it's just sad. It just seems like even without evidence, the justice system just wants to punish anyone, just someone for the crime, and then they can just like rest. Now at number three, we have David Spence. David was accused of the rape and murder of two 17 year old girls and one 18 year old boy in Waco, Texas. David received the death penalty in two trials for the murders. These trials went on for more than a decade. A total of four people were caught for this crime and they were given life in prison. The fourth suspect was released just several years later. This was because he took the plea deal and he testified against David. This crime took place in 1982 and David was executed by lethal injection in 1997. David was on death row for about 15 years. After he was executed, it was proven that the fourth suspect who testified fight against David while he told lies. He was offered cigarettes, television, alcohol privileges, and conjugal visits for his testimonies. Is this real life right now? If this was my case, I don't think I would listen to convict's testimonies. You never know what they're going to say because they're going to just say anything and you don't know what they have just been offered to say what they just said. Nothing actually pointed to David Spence. You look into the evidence, the physical evidence. Number two, we have Marcellus Williams. Now this case is a little bit different than the ones on this list. Marcel was actually almost executed, but a last minute situation developed. I wanted to share this story because it's just really messed up. And I think in this situation, I think a lot of the cases, well, they should go like this. So Michaelis was scheduled to be executed, but moments before he was killed, the Missouri governor stepped in after looking at this case himself and he halted the execution until all evidence was looked at. Marcellus had been locked away since 1998. For the death of 42 year old Felicia Gale, she was stabbed 43 times. Well, after 20 years, Marcellus has been locked away as the person who committed this crime. But it was proven that his DNA wasn't even on the murder weapon. A lot of the evidence actually never pointed to him at all. He was locked away for so long for nothing. Marcellus' lawyers tried to bring this up to Supreme Court, but they rejected it. Only the governor of the state had the power to stop the execution. So now it's just a waiting game to see what happens. But the reason why I brought this up is because they're actually going to look into everything to figure out if this is actually the right guy or not. Finally, number one, we have Leo Jones. He was convicted of murdering a police officer in Jacksonville, Florida. Lee actually signed a confession after several hours of police interrogation. After the confession, he said that he was forced into it. He feared for his life because police brutally beat him. This case went to trial and after seven years, Leo Jones was seen to be guilty of his crime and he was executed by the electric chair. After Leo Jones was killed, eyewitnesses actually came out of hiding to give a statement to what really happened. The wrong person was executed. These witnesses probably didn't come forward out of fear, but now a man lost his life. Do you guys think something should happen to these two eyewitnesses? witnesses who just kept important details to themselves? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. That's it for this video guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys all in the next one.